the decade of the 90s was, was exhibiting very small changes. Uh, if we saw a half a meter to a meter per year of thinning, that was a pretty large number uh, in that time frame. But since the turn of the century, we're seeing some of those same glaciers now thinning at 15 and 20 and 25 meters per year. Greenland, pretty easy. Warmer melts. It also flows faster, as we'll see, but Greenland's actually pretty easy. Yes, there's probably more snowfall in the middle as it warms, but the melting on the side wins more. And so it's pretty straightforward for Greenland. As we turn up temperature too much, Greenland gets in trouble. Earlier this month, the surface of the ice sheet covering Greenland melted more widely than has been seen in 33 years of satellite imagery. We got some reports that there was melt going on all around Greenland, literally like so much water running off that it was washing out bridges and things, that there were runways that were on the snow that were having problems. You know, this shows a, a sea level contribution of now 8 millimeters since the year 2002, but it's really the rate here of, of half a millimeter per year in, in the first five years to doubling that to one millimeter per year in the, the most recent four years. That gives Greenland a, a 10 year doubling time on its sea level contribution. That this um, increase, this doubling in 10 years of Greenland's sea level contribution uh, makes it much more likely that we will observe more than one meter of sea level rise um, by the end of the century. Jason Bach showed me some of the most recent grace uh, curves yeah. from Greenland, which appear to well, be accelerating. A, there's a big melt in 2012. Right. Very warm year, very high melt. Well, I, I think it's a phenomenal event. I mean, I've, I'm used to looking at the melt maps of Greenland. Uh, I can remember back uh, 20 years ago when we didn't have those melt maps, but we've had them for the last 20 years and, and there's just nothing comparable that we've seen to what happened uh, during that period of July of 2012 in terms of the extent of the melting. The thing you got to understand is the top parts of the Greenland ice sheet are over 12,000 feet above sea level. It's very, very cold there. It's never above freezing. And what happened was we had the temperatures go up to almost 42 degrees in places. And if that was just that one event, uh, you might say that that was just uh, an unusual event. But take a look at uh, 2010, 2011, we had just exceptional melt events in Greenland. Not necessarily the area of Greenland, it was still a large area, but in terms of the duration and intensity of the melt. And in areas of Greenland, uh, including northern Greenland, we haven't seen that much and it's been uh, very well documented uh, with the satellite record. We have daily melt maps, daily uh, surface temperature maps that are generated, and it really allows us to see what's happening. And I just find the combination of 2010, 2011, 2012 just uh, astounding to see. It'll be interesting to see the volume of melt. Uh, uh, 700 gigaton loss of mass between January 2012 and, and about September. So it's about twice what you expect on a normal year from melting of the ice sheet in the summer. So it's a big drop. But it's just one year, right? You right. have to look at uh, the longer time trends, or if, if you plot that with the other years, yeah, took a big dip in 2012. But yes. We don't know what's going to happen in 2013. What are the, uh, say, what are the ice core records tell us about these kind of melting events? Does they give us any clue going back as to how, whether this happens in the past? We have some of these melt events. Uh, they're not very common. Uh, they don't occur uh, every decade. They don't occur every century. They don't occur every couple of centuries. They occur a couple times a millennium, it appears. But I think also rare events are something that jump out and are surprising. I don't know how surprising 2012 is. It was kind of the, the natural conclusion of this long uh, and expanding melt zone on the ice sheet. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say about the summit of the Greenland where that melt occurred, but that melt in the big picture isn't that important because that almost all that melt water is going to refreeze. But I, what I expect to see is that continuation of very high levels of melt in the zones of the Greenland ice sheet that do drain into the ocean where the meltwater isn't going to get refrozen. 
and an expansion of those zones and combine that with increased water temperatures uh, melting more of the base of some of these outlet glaciers we just have more melt everywhere the way the greenland ice sheet works is that you put almost like if i poured honey in the middle of the table snow builds up in the middle of greenland compacts to ice and then it flows out to the sides flows out in outlet glaciers like you say out the fjord and once that water is melted and you're below a certain elevation, it's not going to refreeze in the system. It's going to be lost to the ocean and lost from the Greenland ice sheet. Cumulatively, if you do that several years in a row, of course, the glacier is thinner. And if you're an outlet glacier and you're thinner, you float higher in the water. That allows you to flow faster, allows the icebergs to calve off more, and you'll retreat. A decade or so ago, uh, some researchers decided they would go over Greenland with a radar that could see through the ice and see where the land really was. Well, it turns out Greenland is really an atoll. It's a ring of mountains, and the whole center has been pushed down a few hundred meters below sea level. Okay, so we've got this huge dip in there. Uh, that might not be so bad if it were isolated from the ocean, but there are a few places where there are fjords that reach through from the ocean into this depressed area. Um, that means that the ice is going to try and stream out those fjords. They're the low sort of part. It's going to try and flow out, and that's what's happened in the Jakobshavn sort of uh, ice stream coming, coming out, glacial stream coming out. Um, and the ocean waters carry much more heat capacity than the air, and so that means they can have a much more rapid effect. And so that means that the water and the heat in the ocean can get at the, get at the ice. That's what's causing so much concern about a potential rapid rise. We're seeing melting of the ice, we're seeing it sort of flowing and going to lower elevations, which means it's, it's, it's warmer, and it has these paths to the ocean where the ocean can get in and the ice can sort of move toward and get out. That's a very serious issue.